This video is about interfacing a 4x4 keypad with Riva C series launchpad evaluation board which contains Cortex M4 microcontroller by Texas Instrument. So let's start. These are the topics that we will follow in this video. First of all, we will discuss about the keypad and different types of interfacing of the keypad. After that, step by step, we will follow an example program in order to implement the interfacing of 4x4 keypad. So let's first discuss the keypad and its different interfacings. The use of keypad is one of the common mechanism that is used for user input to the embedded system. User input in an embedded system application is required in many different situations. These are some of the examples of using keypad as a user input. For example, the system operating parameters may require reconfiguration for performance or system requires user input under certain normal as well as abnormal situations. An example of system operating parameters uh, might be changing the threshold of some of uh, the physical quantities like temperature or we might need to set the password in order to access a certain part of the system. Also the user input from the keypad may be used to input data following a request from the microcontroller or simply to trigger the microcontroller to initiate a particular operation. This figure shows a 4x4 alphanumeric keypad. As you can see, there are 16 keys that can be pressed. Out of these 16 keys, 10 keys corresponds to the 10 digits. There are 4 English letters from A to D and we have 2 special characters steric and hash. In context of uh, keypad interfacing, there are two perspectives. One is based on the software and the other one is based on hardware connections. Based on software, we can interface the keypad either in the pulling based method or in interrupt driven method. Based on hardware connections, there are three methods to interface the keypad with the microcontroller. The direct interface, scanned interface, and the multiplexed interface. So let's discuss these one by one. From the software perspective, a keypad interfacing can be either pooling based interfacing or interrupt driven interfacing. In the pooling based method, the microcontroller spends most of the time by continuously scanning the keypad and checking for a possible key press. And if there is any key pressed, its appropriate function is performed and again the program starts scanning the keypad for any key press. On the other hand, in interrupt driven method, the controller is free to execute any other task it is required to perform and scans the keypad only when an interrupt occurs due to a key press. As you can see in the interrupt driven interfacing, the microcontroller is busy in doing something else. So whenever an interrupt is generated by pressing any key of the keypad, then the microcontroller shifts to give the response to that interrupt that will be some function find against the key press. After that, the microcontroller returns to the original program and again perform the doing something else function. From the hardware perspective, a keypad can be interfaced with a microcontroller using any of the three possible schemes that we discussed earlier. So first of all, we will discuss the direct interface. In direct interface, each keypad switch is interfaced directly to a dedicated GPIO pin of the microcontroller. This type of interfacing requires n number of GPIO pins for n switches. The one key advantage of this interfacing approach is its capability to detect all possible combinations of multiple simultaneous switch presses, which is to raise to power n for n switches.
this method can be used for specific switch combination that needs to be configured or when multiple simultaneous key presses are required to be recognized. The negative aspect of this approach is the fact that it is prohibitively demanding in terms of GPIO pins. Some of the possible uses of this approach are modifier keys like shift control, alt keys on a computer keyboard as well as in music keyboards that requires multiple keys pressed simultaneously in order to generate some interesting music. The second type of keypad interfacing based on hardware is the scanned interfacing. In this type of interfacing, the keypad switches are arranged in such a manner that they form an M cross N matrix, having M rows and N columns. The scanning is performed by driving the digital output corresponding to each column one by one and reading all the rows for each column drive to find out which key is pressed. The key advantage of this approach is the reduced number of GPIO pins required. As you can see, we only need M plus N number of GPIO pins for M cross N keys of the keypad. This approach has certain limitations like detecting multiple keys press at the same times. Also, it cannot detect the key rollover situation. The key rollover situation is the situation when the first key is pressed and the second key is pressed before releasing the first key. So we cannot detect uh, this key rollover situation using scanned interface. Also, if a key is pressed for a longer duration, the scan interface will count that key as it is pressed multiple times. So these are the limitations of the scanned interface. Of course, we will need to use some kind of pull up or pull down resistors while using these switches of the keypad. We can also use the internal pull up or pull down resistors available in the uh, microcontroller. Multiplexed interface, third type of hardware based interfacing of the keypad. In this type of interfacing, the keypad switches are arranged in the matrix form. And now for driving the columns, we are using N GPIO output pins through our demultiplexer. And similarly, on the row side, we are using M GPIO input pins through a multiplexer. The advantage of using the multiplexer and demultiplexer is that now we only need M plus N number of GPIO pins from the microcontroller for interfacing and 2 raised to power M cross 2 raised to power N keypad. For example, for a keypad of size 16 by 16, we just need 4 plus 4 GPIO pins. This is the maximum possible number of keys or switches that can be interfaced for a given number of GPIO pins. This approach has a limitation. Since a large number of keys are connected in multiplexed interface, it takes significant processor execution time to scan the entire keypad once. Now we will discuss an example program to understand the keypad interfacing. We will take this example program as a case study to see how step by step we can interface a 4x4 keypad in pooling based scanned interface with GVAC series launchpad evaluation board. We will also interface a common cathode 7 segment display with the microcontroller and will program it to display the key pressed on the keypad. So let's start. The first step is to select the GPIO ports for interfacing the 7 segment display as well as the 4x4 keypad. There are 35 GPIO pins available on the TYC series launchpad evaluation kit. Let's use GPIO port B for interfacing the 7 segment display and pin 4 to 7 of port C for interfacing the keypad columns. We will use pin 0 to pin 3 of port E for interfacing the rows of the 4x4 keypad. After finalizing the ports for interfacing 7 segment display and keypad, now we need to perform some configuration steps. The first configuration step is the clock enable. For enabling the clock on the GPIO ports, we need to configure uh, this clock getting control register. Bit 0 to bit 5 of this register can be used to enable clock on port A to port F respectively. Since we are using port B, 
port C and port E. Therefore, the bit 1, bit 2 and bit 4 of this register will be set in order to enable clock on these ports. So the corresponding hexadecimal value is hex 16 that we need to write on this clock getting control register. After enabling the clock, we need to select the bus for the GPIO port. We can access a GPIO port either by advanced peripheral bus or advanced high performance bus. This bus selection is performed by selecting the appropriate base addresses for the GPIO ports. For this example program, we are selecting the advanced peripheral bus for all the three ports. Therefore, the corresponding addresses for port B, port C and port E has been listed and also highlighted in the table. These addresses will be required for calculating the address for other configuration registers. Let's discuss the remaining GPIO configurations for each port one by one. Let's start from port B as a digital output to which the seven segment display is interfaced. We will be using all the eight pins of the port B for interfacing the seven segment display. Therefore, the mask for pin zero to seven will be hex FF. First of all, in the step three of the configuration, we need to clear all the bits of alternate function select register because we are not interested in using any alternate functionality of the GPIO pins. In step four, we need to digital enable all the GPIO pins. For that, we need to set all the pins of this register and for that, we need to write the register value hex FF. In step five, we need to set the direction of the digital pin we can configure a digital pin as a output as well as an input in order to set the pin as a output we need to set that corresponding pin since all the pins will be used as an output therefore we need to write this register value to the direction selection register also in the step 5 we need to find the register offset for gpio data register the 12 bit offset value for gpio data register is calculated in this way since we are using all the bits from bit 0 to bit 7 therefore all these uh, bits bits therefore all these bits will be equal to 1 so the corresponding uh, offset value will be hex 3 fc have you noticed all these register addresses has been calculated by adding their offset values to the base address of the port b the port c is used as a digital input port to which we have interfaced the columns of 4x4 keypad this is the base address of port c as we discussed earlier and we are using pin 4 to pin 7 whose corresponding mask value is hex f0 similar to port b we need to clear all the bits of the alternate function select register in the digital enable register we are writing uh, this value in order to enable pin 4 to pin 7 as a digital gpio pin in the direction register you can notice instead of setting the bits we need to clear the bit because now we are configuring the pin as a input pins instead of output pin also in the configuration step 5 we are using gpio pull down resistor register because we want to use the internal pull down resistor available in the microcontroller so it is pretty simple we just need to set the bits whose corresponding pin we want to use internal pull down resistor so by writing hex f0 we are enabling the internal pull down resistor on pin 4 to pin 7 calculation of the 12 bit offset value for the gpio data register is also the same as we discussed in the port p we are just using pin 4 to pin 7 therefore the corresponding register offset is hex 3c0 similarly all these register addresses are calculated by adding these offset values to the base address of the port c moving on the port E, which is interface to 4x4 keypad rows, is configured as digital output. Since we are using just 4 pins from pin 0 to pin 3 of the port E, therefore the corresponding mask will be hex 0F. In the alternate function select register, we will be writing all the pins to 0 and in digital enable register, we will just enable the pin 0 to pin 3 by writing this hex value. In the direction control register, we are going to set these four bits by writing this value because we want to use these pins as an output pin. Also, 12-bit offset for the GPIO data register is calculated in the same fashion 
and uh, the register offset is hex 03c now we will discuss the pinouts for the circuit connection as you can see this 4x4 keypad there are interfacing connections the first four connections are related to the rows and the next four are related to the columns of the keypad switches on TWAC series launch pad we are using port C pin 4 to pin 7 for interfacing the column 1 to column 4 respectively and the row 1 to row 4s are interfaced with TWAC series launch pad GPIO port E0 to E3 respectively so these are the simple connections that we need to perform with the 4x4 keypad one important thing to note is that we are using the internal pull down resistors as we discussed in the configuration step as we are also using the seven segment display in order to display the key pressed on the keypad therefore we also need to discuss this interfacing on the seven segment display there there are 10 pins that we need to connect with the microcontroller eight pins are led to the eight different segments available on this seven segment display since we are using common cathode configuration therefore the pin 3 or pin 8 that is a common terminal it must be connected to the ground pin while the eight segments of this display has been connected with the gpio port b from pin 0 to pin 7 so this is the complete circuit diagram for interfacing 4x4 keypad and a 7 segment common cathode type display with the microcontroller one important thing to note that we need to provide a current limiting resistance while connecting the 7 segment display with the TWC series launch pad ground so that's what the configuration steps and hardware connections now we will discuss the C language program in microvision keel we will write a C language program and uh, try to download it in TWAC series launchpad. At the end, we will see a live demonstration of this keypad interfacing program. Let's create a new project in Microvision Key for our keypad interfacing program. First of all, select new Microvision project. You need to select the directory. always create a new folder for a new project let me call the project uh, keypad underscore interfacing hit save in the select device for target you need to select the device available on TWAC series launchpad that is TM that is TM4C123GH6 PM. Hit OK. In the manage runtime environment, we need to select the core from CMS Sys and uh, in the device, we need to select the startup. Hit OK. Now you can see this is a, a blank project is created. Uh, let's rename the target to TM4C123GH6 PM. In the source group we need to add a new source file we can add a plenty of different source files let's select c file let me call it uh, keypad file hit add and you can see a blank c language file has been added to the project so this is the c code for the keypad interfacing let's discuss its different sections one by one the first part of the program is the comment section it is always very useful to add comments that describes what you are expecting your program to do you can also add some details related to the interfacing and uh, some for documentation the second part of the program is defining some macros all these macros contains the addresses for the configuration registers and uh, some of the masks that we need for implementing the program logic after that you can see these two macros that are used for generating delays and uh, this is the function prototype uh, for inserting the delay in the program 
this function is defined at the end of the program so this is just a function prototype in the global variable section i have defined a 2d array that serves the purpose of a lookup table so this two dimensional array contains the hexadecimal values in order to display the digits on the seven segment display these values correspond to the values displayed on the 4x4 keypad for example on the 4x4 keypad the first column first row is the number one and in order to display the number one on seven segment display we need to print we need to print this value on the corresponding data register similarly all these values are defined according to the numbers present on 4x4 keypad so this is the default value we are showing just decimal when there is no key is when there is no key pressed in the main function these are all the configuration steps that we are performing first of all we are enabling the clock on all the three GPIO pins and waiting until it is uh, enabled. After that, we are digitally enabling and uh, setting the direction for port B, port C, and port E. And at the start, we are just uh, displaying the decimal value on the seven second display. In the while loop, we have implemented the scanned interfacing approach of the 4x4 keypad. This loop is firing the each keypad row one by one and the next loop is reading the each column one by one and checking for any key pressed. So whenever a key is pressed, its corresponding lookup table value is loaded in the port B GPIO data register as a result of which shows a number on the seven segment display. At the end of this while loop, we have provided a small delay in order to avoid any switch to bouncing and last you can see uh, the delay function that we are using in this main loop so that's all for the c language program uh, let's build the project and see if we have any kind of errors so there are no errors we are good to go now we need to connect the tiva c series launchpad with our computer and uh, download the program I have connected the Tiva C series launchpad with the computer. Now I need to select the stylus ICDI from the debug, debug menu. Select the stylus ICDI. Hit OK. And now you can download the program. The program has been successfully downloaded. Now we will see its demonstration on the actual hardware. The program has been successfully downloaded. Now press the reset button on the Tiva C series launchpad. So you can notice the decimal point is the decimal point turn on as we has set it as a default state of the system. Now we can press different keys one by one and you can observe those values displayed on the seven segment display let me press a b c d and the special characters hash for hash i am displaying h and for displaying star i am displaying s with the with the decimal point in order to distinguish it from the file so let's press 5 and you can check all the 10 digits as well 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 0. So that was the keypad interfacing with Tiva C series launchpad. So in this video we talk about the keypad interfacing and we take an example program and interfaced the 4x4 keypad and a 7 segment display with the microcontroller and programmed it to show any key pressed on the 
display so that's all for this video thank you for your time if you have any question feel free to ask